So I saw this mouse on eBay and uh, thinking I wanted a, a mouse for some of my Commodore computers, I thought, okay, I'll grab it. I don't, he didn't say whether it was a 1351 or 1350, which is Commodore 64 compatible. Uh, it was about 30 bucks, and I thought, well, I'll take a chance. And uh, after opening it up and looking at it, I have determined that no, it's probably a 1352 mouse, which can be used with the Amiga or the Commodore PC compatible computers that they made in what, late 80s, early 90s maybe? Might have got the date wrong there. So, what I'm planning on doing is I want to convert this mouse so it will work with a Commodore 64 or Commodore 128. I'm going to be testing it on this Commodore 128 because of the built-in basic commands that you can test the joystick or whatever with. Okay, next clip. All right, so here are the pinouts of the various Commodore mice. I'm going to ignore the Amiga joystick and the 1351 joystick mode mouse uh charts and focus on the Amiga mouse and the thirteen fifty one proportional mode. Uh so basically the second column and the fourth column. So I'm going to start out by disconnecting pins one through four on the mouse and trying to hook up the buttons so that it matches up on this one. So I think that I can leave pin six and I need to disconnect, well, pins one through five and disconnect pin nine and connect pin 9 to pin 1. So the two buttons should be able to be readable. And of course I'll leave the 5 volts and the ground connected. Next clip. Alright, so took the mouse apart, uh, hooked it up to an Arduino, and that's the Arduino Leonardo. Uh, you can get those for about five or six bucks. Uh, programmed it, and I'm going to show you the output of that screen here in just a minute. All right, so if I move the mouse around, it's horizontal, vertical. I've got it where it uh, is just returns a bot of information because I think that's all the uh, Commodore can handle. Now this took some figuring out because uh, the Amiga mouse, which is basically what we got here, uh, returns V pulse, H pulse, VQ pulse, and HQ pulse. And I had no idea what that was. So <laughs> I had to look that up to see how to interpret it because it's basically just zeros and ones and you know I, I didn't know you know what to do about that so I looked it up and uh, come to find out okay those are pulses of course uh, and it gives kind of like a sine waves and it's called apparently uh, well, it's not called apparently, but apparently it's called quadrature inputs. And there's a trick to being able to turn that information into a value between 0 and 255. Okay, so uh, let's see what it says. The mouse uses quadru uh, quadrature inputs for each direction. A mechanical wheel inside the mouse will produce two pulse trains. 190 degrees out of phase with the other. 
uh, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to show you the code I used. Okay, now we're back in the Arduino. ID and uh, yeah, I mean it's not very long. It's like probably like thirty lines of code. Uh, I am going to have to output it to instead of outputting it to the screen on this computer. It's going to have to be output to uh, two pins instead so I'm gonna have to do that uh, but basically the the trick is you've got to just determine uh, if the if the two pulses are equal then you decrement it if they're not equal you increment it and that shows that, that tells you if it's you know, going forwards or backwards. So, pretty simple code, and I will put the code, because it's so short, I'll probably put it in the description of this video. Now, before I can test this on an actual Commodore 64, or, well, I'm actually going to test it on the Commodore 128, I've got to, uh, I've got to take the plus five volts and the ground coming from the computer and I've got to feed that to power up the Arduino and then Arduino will power the mouse and let's see uh, this white and gray wire that's uh, that's ground and plus five volts DC. So put that to the Arduino. The Arduino is already powering the uh, the mouse through these two pins at the very end here. Uh, supposedly I have the both mouse buttons connected. That's the the brown and the blue wire. Can't hardly see that, but and. And of course, I got to connect the yellow and red wire. That's the uh, wait a minute. No, I got to look at that again. That I'm, I'm not sure of. I'll check my notes, but I've got to basically feed the output. Of the Arduino to back to the computer and to fit it in there is going to be kind of a, a job uh, I'm probably going to have to desolder all the pins pin headers on the Arduino and just solder the wires directly to keep it as flat as possible and mount it right above the the existing chip uh, but I'll do it all that after I've successfully tested it on an actual Commodore computer so next clip It snowed. Look at the snow. Pretty cool. All right. So I've got this thing wired where it's supposed to be getting its five volts from the 128. Okay. And it's not on right now. Uh, so watch when I turn it on. This is cool. This is pretty cool. Well, for me anyway. But power. All right, my 128's got problems. I'm gonna have to boot in 64 mode. Hang on. All right, I'm now in 64 mode. 
Uh, the 128 mold, I think it's the basic ROM. The socket's messed up. It's loose. So sometimes it boots and sometimes it don't. So, what I'm going to do now is I've got a, I'm using a, uh, an SD to IEC. And i got to change directories. I got the, uh, the 1351 mouse stuff off the internet, of course. Let's see if that gets me in. Okay, let's see. Ah. Yeah, okay. Alright, directory. I think it's mouse for basic. I'll run it. See a mouse cursor appear. Yeah, right there. See it? If I move the mouse. Nothing's happening, not much. Okay. I got the hardware right, I'm pretty sure, but it's the software that's in the Arduino that's not right. So, let's go look at that. Okay, so here is the problem. Uh, the 1351 had a custom chip built just for it called the Moss 5717. Uh, there is no replacement for that chip. Because it's a custom chip. Right. But uh, this guy got its, uh, its patent document. And so this is the information that we can glean from this guy's work. The custom chip is clocked from a 4 MHz crystal whose output is divided by 4 resulting in a 1 MHz nominal clock. Note, it's slightly off from both the PAL and NTSC 64 versions nominal clock if the subject is syncing. Now that's part of the problem, if we're not syncing correctly. We've got to sync with the SID chip inside the 64 or the 128 in this case. The chip is connected to all joystick port inputs except the left button, which is hardwired to the fire input. Thus, it can control all lines. Pot X and pot Y are connected through 5.1K resistors, limiting currents. Pot X is also connected directly to the input of the 5717, that's the custom chip, to provide sync for the true 1351 mode. Ha-ha! That's a, that's a tip right there. Uh, the right mouse button is mounted to the up joystick button. You knew that. The mouse position is tracked the same way as electromechanical mice do. The 5717 keeps a 6-bit position pointer for both directions. This is updated whenever movement is sensed. Okay, we're doing that. The problem is syncing up with the SID chip. And here we go. The chip monitors the sync input. Okay, that's the custom chip in the mouse. The sync input, okay, that's directly connected to pot X. Whenever the input level drops, it is treated as, as the start of the SID measuring cycle. Okay, so in our code, we've got to initialize, I think it's, what pin am I using? I don't remember. It's in the source code. Looking at the other screen. Ten, I think. I'm using pin ten on the Arduino for the, uh, the pot X. So we've got to set set the pin mode in the Arduino code to input and we got to monitor that pin and so when it goes low 
that means okay the said the said chip is ready uh, and we got to set a counter to zero then now see this is kind of the complicated part that I, I don't know if I can understand it correctly it increases a counter is initialized to zero it increases with every clock cycle at one megahertz and a quality detector starts the next phase phase when the counter reaches 320 cycles. After this period, the counter keeps increasing with every clock cycle. Two equality detectors compare the counters with both X and Y direction pointers. As soon as the values match, the respective pot output is pulled high. The measuring capacitor beside the SID starts charging through the 5.1K resistors and a few cycles later the level reaches the SID input level threshold. The SID captures counter value into its readable pot register and the value is tra transmitted to the computer. And then, then it basically just repeats. So, in our, in our Arduino code we've got to check the pot X pin in the Arduino coming from the Commodore computer and then when it drops low that means the SID chip's ready to start taking input and And then we've got to set the pins to output, and we've got to pull those pins high to signal to the SID chip that, hey, we got data to send to you, which is going to be the X and Y positions of the mouse. From what I've been from what I've read, that's, that's apparently what we've got to do. So the thing is, is to get the timing correct. That's going to be the trick, because from the point that we tell the SID chip, "Hey, we've got data to send to you," then that's when the SID chip is going to start charging those resistors inside the Commodore computer. And then a few cycles later, the SID chip is going to read. Okay, so we got to change. So from the point that we say, hey, SID chip, we're ready to send you data. So then we've got to change the, uh, where we pulled those two pins high, and we got to put our data in there instead. And then wait and the SID chip then grabs that information complicated complicated okay this is just a quick side note uh, this is a an Atari trackball okay that I'm, that it's another project that I'm working on that I'll get to later on but uh, Okay, its problem was the the cord. Somebody cut the the connector off of it and tried to replace it with a different one for whatever reason. And of course, that's not going to work because when Atari made their cords, they only used the wires that they needed for the device they were trying to hook up. So it's like either ground or the plus five bolts weren't even coming through the connector because the pin was missing. So. I don't know what they were thinking. So, uh, but my point is, is that okay? This is another project. I'm gonna get it working later on. But when Commodore did their mouse, okay, they're using pot X and pot Y, like off the paddles, to supply the information. They should have done it. They should have implemented it like Atari did the uh, the CX. I think it's CX80. I don't remember, but here was that Atari trackball, okay? Uh, they should have done it like Atari did it, 
and Atari even had a little switch to switch it between joystick and uh, trackball mode. Because what they did was <laughs> just common sense. They used instead of trying to use the paddles, the the retros for the paddles, they just used the up, down, left, and right, and just had the uh, the processor in here send like multiples. You know, you know what I mean. So that makes sense. It it would work with joystick mode or in trackball mode, doesn't matter. It's supplying the same it's using the same pins on the on the joystick connector. Which is is common sense. It's you know, they're doing it the, the simplest way possible and you it achieves the same effect. You've got proportional movement of the cursor, right? You know, trackball. It's basically a big mouse, right? Commodore, <laughs> the engineers, they did all kinds of weird stuff, and he even came up with a custom chip to to do just. They complicated it too much, you know. They didn't have to make it that complicated, but they did. If they were going to do a custom chip, they should have done the the same thing Atari did, you know. They were trying to. Uh, it's like Commodore. What were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> oh, but anyways, that's just a side note. Where Commodore engineers weren't as smart as Atari engineers. Just saying. All right. See what I'm saying? Uh, as I was working on the 1352 mouse, trying to turn it into a 1351, I was also working on the Atari Trackball kind of switch them in between, but the, this schematic is of the CX-22, which is basically like a CX-80, except it's for the 2600. If you notice, what pins are missing? Five and nine. Well, what are five and nine? Paddle A and paddle B. So the Atari track balls don't use the paddle inputs on the connector. Okay, where, okay, that's my rough drawing of, a, of the mouse uh, when I was doing the inputs on it. But if you look at the proportional mouse, that's cable in the way. It's going to my 3D printer. If you look at it, what's it using? It's using the paddle connectors, five and nine. So, Unless Commodore had like timing issues with their joystick stuff, uh, you know, why do they go that route? I'm thinking it's because they overlook the obvious. That's what I'm thinking. Tell me if I'm wrong. I think I'm right. They overlook the obvious. Atari took the simple, the simple way, the simple way is always the better way. It's always the better way. They took the simple way, and it worked. Commodore took the crazy, complicated way, and now it's a crap show about trying to, to re-engineer it. <laughs> and it, they even have problems with their mouse to begin with, 1351 proportional mouse. Anyways... In the rant, continuing with the video. All right, I think that's enough for this video. I'm kind of sick of working on this thing. And so I, I know I've got the hardware right, okay? Hardware's right. All i got to do is uh, work on the Arduino software. And then, you know, upload it to the Arduino. And then later on, worry about sticking it in the case. Uh, but right now, I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of working on it. Uh, especially when I realize how stupid, well, <laughs> you know, that's not the right word, how uh, just disappointed I am in the in the Commodore engineers. And tell me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm thinking I'm right. You know, but to be fair, I've worked on stuff and, and kind of worked on it at the, started at the wrong angle, completed it, and then at the very end realized I could have done it a simpler way. <laughs>
you know. So, anyways, I'm sick of working on this, uh, but I will make a part two of this when I get it completely working. I, I have no doubt I'll be able to do it. Okay, it's a software thing now. I can do software. Uh, I got a bunch of other stuff we're gonna work on. Well, I guess, uh look at that beautiful machine. I gotta work on this TR Sadie Model One computer. Look at it; it's beautiful. Uh, but I can't even test it. I don't have a power supply, so I gotta build a power supply to test this thing with. I gotta get these Tandy 200s going. I've got three of them here, and uh, I'm waiting on uh, some power supplies that I ordered, some cheap power supplies that I'm going to convert to to work with these things. They're lost in New Jersey, you know, for the for like 10 days. Okay, that's the last update, 10 days ago. They're in New Jersey somewhere. Will I ever get them? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I need them. And I got a crap load of Atari cartridges in for the 8-bit computers here, uh, which I'm going to get rid of. I don't know which one I'm going to keep. I got a couple of 600 XLs and got this 800 XL. I don't know if I want to. Uh, you know, I, I really like the 600 XL. Uh, this one has been expanded to 64K and has a, a mod on it. A video monitor output that was at, that was added, but it's horrible. Whoever did it didn't know what they were doing. Apparently, video output's terrible. So I'm gonna have to, you know, I'll probably keep this one because I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna have to work on it, and it's got 64K. So, you know, but I like the 800 too, and I kind of want a, a 1200 XL. Why? I don't know. Just you know, just because. But the uh, I tested most of those cartridges. Most of them's good. Got a couple of uh, bad ones, maybe, but most of them's good, so I'm happy with that. Uh, got another Model One. I need to get going, but I've had that one for a while. I've got a monitor. I ain't even unpacked. It's still in the same shipping box that uh, I received it in. I don't even took it out of the box. Uh, I'm waiting to get a. To, I gotta make a power supply, you know, for for these guys, so I can test them. So there's no reason to unpack the monitor if I can't even power these things up. You know what I'm saying? Got a couple of these guys I've been working on. I've already repaired two. I've got to repair this guy. I'm not even powered it up yet. Uh, it's got a broken axle on the front. That's easily fixed. Electronics haven't tested it yet. So we'll see. All right, so I will complete my 1352 to 1351 mouse. Uh, there'll be a part two coming up. But uh, right now I want to just clear my one of my tables. This is the cleanest one I got, and it's not very clean. <laughs> so I got to get this 128 and this monitor out of the way so I can work on some other stuff. Uh, got a bunch of stuff I got to fix. But uh, you know, waiting on parts, you know, in some of the cases, waiting on parts. This, I'm not waiting on parts. I'm just irritated at the Commodore engineers. All right. Arrgh. Arrgh. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.